Hello, my name is Dr. Hart Pinto and welcome to this JHP medical series on medical statistics. This is lecture 3 and today we're going to look at standard deviation, confidence intervals and p-values. Standard deviation is used for normally distributed data, i.e. data with a bell-shaped curve. It tells the reader how much the data varies in accordance to the mean. A standard deviation of zero means that there is no variation whatsoever in the data in relation to the mean. The higher the value of the standard deviation, the more the data is spread out. In this next slide, it is clear to see a typical bell-shaped curve. One standard deviation includes 68.2% of all the values in the cohort and is represented by the darker green area under the graph. Two standard deviations is equal to 95.4% of values and is represented by the two further points on the graph. Three standard deviations is a total of 99.7% of the values and is the longest arrow on the graph. Let's next consider an example. At a weight loss club, the mean weight loss by patients was 10 kilograms. The standard deviation was calculated for the group to be 2.5 kilograms. Therefore, if we wish to calculate one standard deviation, we need to add 2.5 kilograms above and below the mean. So 10 kilograms plus 2.5 gives us 12.5 and 10 kilograms minus 2.5 kilograms equals 7.5. Therefore, we can state that 68.2% of the patients lost between 7.5 and 12.5 kilograms. The same can be said for when we consider two standard deviations. In this case, we must first multiply the first standard deviation, 2.5 kilograms, by 2 before adding and subtracting it from the mean value. This gives us 10 kilograms plus or minus 5 kilograms, which gives us a range from 5 kilograms to 15 kilograms and therefore we can state that 95.4% of patients lost between 5 and 15 kilograms. Again, the same principle can be put forward for three standard deviations. We multiply the 2.5 kilograms by 3 before adding it and subtracting it from the mean value. In this case, we can see that 95.4% of patients lost between 5 and 15 kilograms. Confidence intervals are used when we want to know a range of values in which the true population value is likely to lie. The true value is the mean value of the whole population. A confidence interval, therefore, is a calculated range in which we can be confident that the true value lies. Confidence intervals may be influenced by two factors. The variation within the data, i.e. the smaller the variation in the sample population, the narrower we know the confidence intervals will be because there's less likely to be a great variation within the whole population. The size of the sample also influences our confidence intervals. The larger the sample size, the less influence outlier factors have on the mean value. Therefore, a larger sample gives more information and produces a narrower confidence interval. Meta-analysis studies use confidence intervals to bring together results from multiple studies. These can be combined to allow for a larger sample size and therefore, as we have discussed, increasing confidence and narrowing the confidence intervals. Confidence intervals are also typically reported as 95%, meaning 
that we can be 95% certain that the true value lies within the range stated. The next slide shows a typical forest plot that is demonstrated in many meta-analysis studies. The chart shows a number of different studies which have investigated the weight loss in patients after starting insulin therapy. The combined estimate shows an overall mean weight loss of approximately 6 kilograms. And the diamond of the combined estimate also shows a much narrower confidence interval compared with the individual studies themselves. P-values give the probability that an observed value could occur by chance. The value is typically represented as a proportion of 1. Therefore, a p-value of 0.25 means the probability of the difference occurring via chance is a 0.25 to 1 or 1 in 4. As a result, we typically determine p-values to be statistically significant if their value is less than or equal to 0 0.05, which means that the difference that occurs can only occur by chance 1 in 20 times it is investigated. A highly significant result is a p-value of less than 0.01, i.e. the difference will only occur by chance in 1 in 100 times investigated, and a p-value of 0.001 is considered to be very highly significant, as the difference will only occur by chance in 1 in 1,000 times it is investigated. OK. So in summary, a standard deviation is a measure of the dispersion of data. The higher the value, the greater the dispersion of the data from the mean. The lower the value, the less dispersion of the data. Confidence intervals are a calculated range in which we can be confident that the true value lies and are often reported as 95% confidence intervals. And lastly, p-values are probability values that an observation can occur by chance and we determine that a p-value less than or equal to 0.05 is statistically significant. As always, thank you for watching and listening. Please leave your comments and suggestions below and I hope this has helped you with your revision for your upcoming exams.